Okay, so this is my 1989 Jeep Cherokee, which I have converted to electric. Um, so that means I've taken the motor out and I have replaced it with an electric motor. Um, as you can see here, uh, it's a lot smaller. Um, it doesn't take up uh, near as much space. Um, it is, uh, you see, mounted um, on the original engine mounts there, um, with a custom bracket uh, that mounts it um, mostly actually below, pretty much down where the oil pan was. Um, just because it's so much smaller. Uh, it mates directly to the transmission, which you can sort of see in the back there. Um, there's no clutch or bell housing anymore. Um, this is a manual transmission. Um, that's all been removed. It just connects uh, directly to the transmission because um, you don't do that much shifting um, in an electric vehicle. You mostly run in you know, one or maybe a couple of the gears. Uh, you don't sort of run through all five. Um, and if you do have to shift, um, it's easier to shift uh, without a clutch because you, just, you don't have so much inertia going around um, from the whole setup because you just have a little electric motor there. You don't have six pistons, you know, going up and down in a big flywheel and, and all those extra pieces. So you can um, sort of match the uh, RPMs and shift a little nicer. Um, I'll go through a little bit of how all the wiring uh, works here. Um, if you see down here, uh, you'll see two big power cables. There's a big red one and then sort of back here, there's a big black one. Um, that's the positive and negative coming in from the battery. Um, which we'll get to a little later. Um, they go through this uh, big switch here, which is just basically a big master power switch, um, which lets me switch off um, all the power so that it's not going into all the components here if I have to work on it or something. And if you see, it's also connected to an emergency pull cable, uh, which goes into the dash um, in case something goes horribly, terribly wrong. Um, it's a manual thing that you can pull. You know, it, it can't possibly be misconfigured or something. Um, if you see that goes through here, um, it goes into this uh, control box here. This just has a couple of contactors and stuff, which basically handles sort of turning on power to various components in here. I'm, I might do a small video um, of that sort of separate. I'll, I'll pull the lid off and do that, but we're just going to do a general overview here. Um, you'll see I do still have a 12 volt battery. I um, mean, here there is there are still a number of things um, powered by 12 volts in here. Um, you'll see some of the components over there. Um, there's a power steering pump and there's a vacuum pump um, next to it. Uh, since we don't have a um, regular uh, combustion engine to generate vacuum, uh, we have to generate vacuum with a pump uh, for things like power braking. Um, you, you can go without power braking technically, um, but uh, it's, it's a fairly large and heavy vehicle, so it's a lot nicer to have power braking. Um, it also runs you know, various components inside the dash and stuff, lights, stereo, that kind of thing, all run in 12 volts. Um, you can do it without a battery and just run it directly, um, but it is recommended to do a battery, and most uh, commercial EVs do it this way. Um, just it gives you a, a little more... Um, sort of redundancy of you have some power stored here and you know if you have an issue connecting to your um, battery or your, your main drive battery goes dead you don't immediately lose things like uh, power braking um, which might be uh, a bit terrifying. Um, as you see the power goes along here and hopefully I can show this um, it goes into a big controller uh, which is here and you'll see there's also uh, some electrical components here. This is a DC to DC converter, so that converts the 96 volt power that goes into the motor down to 12 volts. That functions essentially like an alternator. So that will charge the battery since we, we don't have an alternator running um, from the motor. Um, that's just sort of an inefficient way to do things. It works well on a combustion engine because you have to have it running all the time. Um, but for an electric motor, it doesn't really make sense. Um, the controller here, this is what basically um, handles sort of everything uh, working with the motor. It, it takes the throttle input, um, it converts the um, voltage down to the correct thing, it sends all the signals, it actually converts it to three-phase power. Um, you'll see there are three connections here because this is a three-phase AC motor, um, whereas we're putting DC power into the connector back here and then we're converting it to three-phase AC up here. Um, AC, that's a uh, pretty common, most electric vehicles are some type of AC. Um, and that also means that we do get regenerative braking with an AC motor. Uh, with a, um, a DC motor, you, you tend to not get that. I, I don't think you get it ever, but I am not a pro at this. Um, here, this is a, just a custom throttle setup here. Um, this is the throttle box that you can sort of see in behind here. And this is just a bracket to mount it um, that we made to mount it to the original you know, throttle cable and stuff here. So you just, you know, moves up and down um, when you push the throttle. It's pretty standard. It's, it's designed to sort of work with... Uh, existing setup. This stuff is all regular here. That's just the uh, uh, brake booster and, you know, wash fluid and all that kind of stuff. And then here, like I mentioned briefly, um, 
there is a vacuum pump here to generate vacuum, and then this is power steering pump. Um, I actually have this switch, so this one doesn't run all the time, this power steering pump here, um, because it does sort of use power continuously, not a ton, um, but it does use a little bit. So, um, you know, in the interest of uh, saving power to get more range, I have a switch inside the dash, and I only turn this on if I need to parallel park or something like that, because actually the, the vehicle, especially right now, um, when there's not a lot of weight in the front here, uh, it's not particularly hard to steer. Um, without power steering, only if you have to do sort of very small maneuvers, it can be sort of very tiresome. So you can flick that on really quickly, move in, you know, for 30 seconds, park, and then turn it back off, and you're not uh, using up extra power. Um, we'll move along uh, to the back here, actually. Um, first of all, you can see uh, I do have it plugged in. Um, the uh, gas tank has obviously been removed, and I've replaced the spout with a uh, J1772 um, level 2 charger. That's the sort of kind of standard level two charger that most um, uh, EVs use, um, you know, and people will generally install in their homes. If you can see, um, there's the charger just uh, installed in my garage. Um, this doesn't charge uh, super fast. It charges a lot faster than uh, 120, um, but it's not like the DC fast charging or like those Tesla superchargers uh, you hear about. Uh, that's a different type of plug. Tesla has sort of a proprietary plug, and there's a couple other standard ones as well um, that charge a lot faster. This is runs off a standard 240, um, and it's reasonably fast, but you know, uh, you know, it's still you know three four hours at least to charge something instead of 30 minutes. Um, We'll go to the back here. Um, this is the battery box. So this is basically where the gas tank used to be below that, but we actually cut out um, the back here so that you could access the batteries, which I'll see if I can do here with one hand, that you could actually access the batteries from the top here so that I can you know, check voltages and things like that a little easier than if we had them just mounted underneath and we had to remove a box. It would be really difficult, especially because these batteries are quite heavy. Um, as you can see, I actually only have one pack in here. Um, this here, this is just an extra charger that I have sitting in here that allows me to connect to 120 right now. Um, just should I need to while I'm testing or something. Uh, in the future, this is actually going to has room for three battery packs here. I just I don't actually have enough batteries uh, to do that right now. Um, these are actually Nissan Leaf uh, battery modules. Um, these are 12 modules out of a Nissan or 14 modules, sorry, out of a Nissan Leaf, uh, which normally has 48 modules in it. Um, I need a few more so I can make a couple more packs. Um, the idea is to put three packs back here and then probably three packs up front as well, which will actually give me quite a bit of range. Um, here is just a big old um, fuse, uh, which just handles fusing these whole packs. Um, it will handle all the packs back here in case there's some sort of issue. Um, and these fuses are a lot bigger than a normal car fuse. They, they cost over a hundred bucks. You'll see it's, you know, as big as my hand here. Um, and then this here, you can see how get this drill out of the way here. Um, this is actually the charger. So what I showed you before, I, I called it the charger. It's actually the charging station. So it sort of takes the power, you know, from a 240 plug and converts it to something that an electric vehicle can handle. And then it also handles some safety things, like it only charges if it receives a signal from the vehicle, stuff like that. And so this is the actual charger. Think of this like the, you know, the charging brick of a laptop or something like that. You know, this is what's taking the input power from that and actually converting it to um, essentially 96 volts, which is what my battery system is here, although it actually charges up to about 114.5 uh, uh, volts, which is my voltage for these packs here. Um, when you hear anything referred to as voltage, that's usually like a nominal voltage. So that's what, um, sort of like the average that a battery will run at. Um, whereas you, know, you actually have voltage above and below that, depending on you know, how charged the batteries are or aren't. Um, so for 96, we go all the way up to 114.5. Uh, I mean, you can see it's actually running now. There's just a little fan here. Um, and then it's blinking green, which means it's basically charged. It's just topping it up slightly because I unplugged it and plugged it back in. So it's going to um, top up a little. And this is mounted. There's a custom bracket back here. And we, we just cut out some of the plastic here. Um, we built this little, sort of little bracket to cover this part up where we had to cut some out. Um, which actually tucks in here quite nicely. I'm sort of pretty pleased with that. And you see, we uh, we ran the cables actually through here. Um, we considered running them uh, under the Jeep, but um, we thought it'd be a little safer, uh, nicer to sort of have them up here. Um, you know, they they weren't you know going to be out and down in the mud and stuff like that since they're they're not super thick as you can see here. Then we just did this aluminum cap here to make them sort of nice and safe, hopefully. So um, you know, nothing happens. And you'll see, there's also a, a 
just a USB cable here. Um, it does not charge on USB. Um, that is just for, uh, I can configure the charger because this is a programmable charger for different voltages. Um, or I can also just uh, see charge history and um, some other information like that. Okay, uh, last bit, we'll just look inside at the dash for a little bit here. Okay, um, so I had to do a bit of a custom dash here because obviously we don't have a lot of things like, um, you know, oil pressure, uh, engine temperature, that kind of thing. Um, because what well, we do, but they're, they're totally different. Well, we don't have oil pressure. Um, there's motor temperature and controller temperature and stuff. Um, the speedometer is still the same. That's actually manual. Uh, hooks onto the transmission, so it works completely the same. Um, this is the uh, basically con uh, gauge for the controller. It will show, you know, RPMs, voltages, temperatures, and stuff for that controller I showed. Um, this, if I can show here, this is for uh, DC amps. This is um, sort of showing the, the flow of positive or negative of amps I have. I don't actually have this connected up uh, right now, so it doesn't work. Um, uh, and then if we see here, this is actually, like I said, the emergency stop button. You just you pull this out a bit. You'll see, maybe you hear it click there. That's just flicking the breaker over. So I'm having. Um, I did actually make a custom uh, console in here as well. Um, this is actually primarily because the uh, old plastic one was just a broken mess and wasn't really useful. And I did have to, you know, mount some custom buttons um, and stuff. This is a uh, battery gauge here. This just gives me all kinds of information about the battery, what my usage is, um, you know, how what the estimated, you know, hours or distance I have remaining is, that kind of stuff. Um, and then these are some custom switches. This is for programming the controller. It's a little weird. You have to program it with just a single button, but uh, it does work. This is for turning the power steering on and off. Um, this is uh, actually for flipping on basically an econ mode that just gives you a sort of a use a little less power and you do a little more regen um, and you can configure those settings. And then these two are actually for electric heaters to turn on um, because we obviously don't have a motor that's generating a whole ton of heat um, anymore. So we have to just heat with um, electricity. Uh, so I've replaced uh, back in there. That's where the heater core and stuff would go. Um, we've taken out what was normally in there. Um, and we've put in uh, basically two electric heaters that go in there that do about uh, three kilowatts um, of heat, which is actually quite a bit. But that also uses up a lot of battery. That's why we can turn on one or both um, or none, uh, which probably I am also going to put in uh, heated seats uh, in all these uh, seats here. Um, I actually already have the components for that. I just it's still August, so I haven't really got around to that because it's not a priority. Um, and that's actually the most efficient way to do. Um, heating uh, in an electric vehicle. It's a lot better than just sort of blowing hot air around. You need a lot less energy to keep people warm. So that's recommended. I mean, you can see this is also still a little work in progress. I don't have everything um, connected back up here. I have to connect the uh, heater uh, back up still. I'm missing a part for that. And then um, I need to put some LEDs and stuff actually behind here. So things like the turn signal light will work properly and stuff. Um, so I haven't, I haven't put everything back together because I'm just going to have to take it right back off once I the lights arrive and stuff to put back in there. Okay, here, um, we're just gonna start this up. I'll sort of show you what it's like when it's started up. Uh, it's actually not very exciting. Um, it doesn't make a lot of noise or anything, which is kind of the point, but uh, I'll still show you how it works. Um, you just sort of turn the key to start. There's no starting, there's no ignition, there's no starter motor to go. You're just sort of turning it on. Um, you see the gauges will light up. You'll hear a little bit of a sort of hum there. Um, that is just the uh, vacuum pump, uh, putting the vacuum up to speed. Uh, shortly, that's gonna turn off. Um, and yeah, that's the noise it's actually normally going to make. Um, I'll just sort of rev the engine here a little bit. You'll see it, uh, it's not super loud. It doesn't uh, sound like a, a whole lot. It sounds almost like, um, you know, a blender or something like that. It's just a really big version of that. Um, also, uh, you'll notice I can do this, you know, inside my garage and not kill myself, um, because I'm, you know, not putting out any emissions. Okay, so uh, that's pretty much it. Um, as you can see, there's you know still a couple of things outstanding, and actually most of them are not related to the EV build. They're more related to this being a you know nearly 30 year old Jeep. Um, there's a couple sort of wiring gremlins um, in the 12 volt system uh, to work out, and there's a you know a few things to clean and glue back together and stuff. Um, as you can see, everything's uh, also horribly covered in sap um, because it's been parked under a big old pine tree um, for about the last five years. So um, that's going to just take a lot of sort of scrubbing to get off. Um, you see there's sort of a grill um, on the front here. Uh, that's just the old grill put back, but there's not actually a radiator or anything here. There's actually just a flat aluminum plate that I've mounted a whole bunch of stuff that we showed earlier to um, inside. Uh, I might add some cooling in here. Uh, we'll see that it's, it's sometimes recommended to do a bit of, 
you know, water cooling for the controller there as it can get a little warm. Um, I work in Canada here, so it's not uh, amazingly warm, but in the summer, uh, you know, it might cause a few difficulties. So I was going to sort of, you know, do some tests and see what my temperatures look like once I get sort of figured out what gears to drive in and that kind of thing. And, you know, what RPM range the motor likes to run in. And I can always, you know, put some cooling back in there. It won't be a big, huge radiator, but it might be, you know, a chill plate with, a, you know, just a couple of tubes running or something. So, uh, you know, thank you for watching the video. Um, I hope this was pretty cool. Uh, apologies for my sort of shaky video. Video. Um, I have a tiny bit of a tremor um, and I'm just filming this with my phone so it doesn't always end up with the world's most stable video but uh, hopefully this was interesting to everyone.